हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग वनकम वनकम एवरीबडी कम ऑन सो कमिंग टू द लास्ट फाइनल पंच वन हाई रिविजन विथ मी फॉर नेफ्रोलॉजी एंड रूमेटोलॉजी सो लेट अस गेट स्टार्टेड टुडे इवनिंग यस ओके ग्रेट सो हाउ वी हैव टू डू we have to start for the high yield revision by always arranging the topics so i call them the top 10 topics that we have in nephrology and top 10 topics flow charts in rheumatology is what we are going to revise today in this session right so in nephrology we are going to start with anemia and we are going to end with dialysis with what are the updates important drugs we'll go with that right so let's get started with anemia in renal disorders i know we have studied in class the topic but what we want to know in addition are the flow charts application so we know that anemia in renal disorders is the most common mechanism the most common mechanism of the anemia in renal disorder is the erythropoietin deficiency is the erythropoietin deficiency and that is why the most common type of anemia is the normocytic anemia the most common type is the normocytic anemia that is what we learned now we want to convert it into a practical application clinical vignette based question so because it is the most common mechanism when our patient is coming what is the first line treatment what is the first line treatment of anemia in chronic kidney disease the first line treatment of anemia in the patient with chronic kidney disease how should we proceed in this patient we know most common cause is erythropoietin deficiency so we want to supplement erythropoietin deficiency but it is not a one line answer because we must know that the erythropoietin what does it do mechanism of action erythropoietin increases the rate of rbc production increases the rate of rbc production by 6 to 16 times normal and because of that it also increases the demand of the nutrients required for rbc production especially iron especially iron requirement increases in the bone marrow because of increased rate of rbc production and hence it is mandatory to ensure adequate iron stores you want to ensure adequate iron stores before starting the erythropoietin therapy before starting the erythropoietin injection we want to ensure that there are adequate iron stores so question quick hematology question for you which is the best parameter which is the best parameter to assess the iron store which is the best parameter to assess the iron store hematology question give me the answer the best parameter to assess the iron store in the body is the serum ferritin levels the serum ferritin levels is the ideal answer serum ferritin levels is the best one but this is in all except in renal failure except in ckd why what happens in ckd in the ckd the chronic renal failure causes a pro inflammatory state it is a pro inflammatory state and that is why it can cause false elevation of ferritin levels false elevation in the ferritin level because we know from covid era that ferritin is also acute phase reactant so that is why it can cause false elevation and that is why only in renal failure in patient of ckd cases one in patient with ckd cases the best parameter is to measure 
ट्रांसफर इन सेचुरेशन बेस्ट पैरामीटर इज टू मेजर द ट्रांसफर इन सेचुरेशन इज द बेस्ट टू एस एस दी आय स्टोर सो वेन अवर अ पेशंट ऑफ सी के डी इज प्रेजेंटिंग विथ हिमोग्लोबिन लेस देन टेन ग्राम पर डीएल विथ अनिमिया इन सी के डी वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू मेजर इन दिस पेशंट वी वॉन्ट टू मेजर ट्रांसफर इन सेचुरेशन वी वॉन्ट टू मेजर द ट्रांसफर इन सेचुरेशन वी वॉन्ट टू मेजर If the transfer in saturation is more than twenty percent, that means adequate iron store is there. You want to start the patient on erythropoietin therapy. Start the patient on erythropoietin therapy. But in the patient where the transfer in saturation is less than twenty percent, inadequate iron store, you want to first give IV. iron infusion you want to first give iv iron infusion and after giving iv iron infusion you want to start erythropoietin therapy so please remember when you want to treat anemia in renal disorder we know most common cause is erythropoietin but first line need not be erythropoietin in patient who has inadequate store first line treatment is iron replacement followed by erythropoietin therapy okay so quickly help me what are the causes of erythropoietin failure come on enumerate for me what are the causes of erythropoietin failure most common cause in our country is poor compliance most common cause is poor compliance because our patient are over smart you tell them to take erythropoietin thrice a week they will take once a week if you tell them take 10000 unit they will take 6000 unit and they will say we are saving that we don't want any side effect but actually they are only saving money nothing else they are saving but that can be common cause of erythropoietin failure but if you ensure compliance then it is possible that patient is having ongoing gi loss in the form of malina patient is having occult sepsis or the patient has got recent hemorrhage patient has got recent hemorrhage these can be the causes of erythropoietin failure so important points about anemia in renal disorder important mcq take this forward the second topic we want to know ckd associated metabolic bone disease metabolic bone disease occurs only when the renal disorder are for more than 3 6 months duration bone can get affected only when renal disorder is more than 6 months duration that is why it occurs in chronic kidney disease only but what are the mechanisms we want to know the mechanisms bone disease are affected because of the uremia along with the uremia the most important the most specific factor affecting the bone health in the renal failure is the hyperphosphatemia most specific is hyperphosphatemia followed by limited mobility limited mobility and the most common acid base balance defect in renal disorder that is chronic acidemia so we are revising important flow charts from harrison must know must know point so in renal disorder lasting more than 6 months multiple factor can contribute and affect the bone health what happens due to uremia the uremia causes anorexia because of the anorexia patient is prone to develop nutritional deficiency patient is prone to develop nutritional deficiency patient can develop along with having poor intake of calcium 
patient is also having vitamin D3 deficiency which is going to reduce the absorption of the calcium from the gut. Reduce the absorption of calcium from the gut leading to hypocalcemia can occur. Hypocalcemia can occur because of the multiple factor. At the same time, calcium and phosphate which are normally in homeostasis are different in renal failure because phosphate excretion is affected. The phosphate if it remains in the body causes oxidative damage. Causes oxidative damage to the vascular endothelium and increases the risk of heart failure increases the risk of heart failure cardiovascular mortality and to prevent the above complication to prevent the above complication what does the calcium do the calcium in the blood binds to the phosphate calcium in the blood binds to the phosphate and that is how hyperphosphatemia also contributes to the hypocalcemia of renal disease contributes to hypocalcemia of renal disease but whatever the cause of hypocalcemia patient will develop secondary hyperparathyroidism patient will develop secondary hyperparathyroidism which is going to resolve the calcium from the bone causing osteitis cystica fibrosa leading to the osteitis cystica fibrosa which is the number one type of metabolic bone disease associated with CKD. The second disease because of limited mobility patient has got poor weight bearing on the bones. The poor weight bearing on the bones can cause remodeling defect, can cause remodeling defect in the bones which is responsible for the second type of the bone disease that is called as adynamic bone disease. As the name tells you, this problem is because of lack of dynamic, lack of movement is causing the second type of metabolic bone disease. The acidemia causes demineralization which can lead to rickets and osteomalacia. Demineralization which can lead to rickets and osteomalacia. This is the third type of metabolic bone disease associated with CKD. So very important question CKD associated metabolic bone disease along with the mechanisms because when you want to treat them you have to reverse all the mechanisms. But the first line treatment the first line treatment which you want to offer the first line treatment in the patient is to correct all of them. Correct the calcium, correct the D3 and the phosphate. So this is called as to correct the mineral homeostasis. This is called as correct the mineral homeostasis we are going to call. So please remember the first line treatment of metabolic bone disease is to give calcium supplementation, D3 supplementation and lower the phosphate, lower the phosphate. That is how you treat the bone disease in the CKD. One student Yashvi wants to know why not oral iron in anemia. So Yashvi you have to look at the holistic approach. Patient already has less oral intake. Iron causes gastritis, can also cause malina, further suppress appetite. And iron absorption, many patients of CKD have got edema. Intestinal edema further decreases oral absorption of iron. 
and more predictable response, better compliance with IV iron. That's why IV iron is preferred in anemia. Yes, let us take it forward. So, Anjum, the screen is very clear. Anna? So, just refresh and you will be able to get that thing. Check your internet connection once. So, we saw first two topics that we went through. Now, let us come to the third important topic. The important topic is renal tubular acidosis. RTA are not one. They are a group of disease having the common defect in acidification. Having the common defect in acidification of the urine. Acidification of the urine by the renal tubules. By the renal tubules. That is why grouped together as renal tubular acidosis. How they are diagnosed? Because of the common findings in the ABG. They are diagnosed based on common findings on the arterial blood gas analysis. What are the common findings? All of them have normal anion gap, metabolic acidosis, low urinary chloride level with a high or positive urinary anion gap. High or positive urinary anion gap. So, remember like this. When to think of RTA? When patient has normal gap in plasma, high gap in urine, you are dealing with a patient of renal tubular acidosis. Dealing with patient of renal tubular acidosis. But based on the defect, there are four types of RTA. Based on the defect, there are four types of RTA. Which are the four types of RTA? Let us illustrate quickly. So, we have got here the glomerulus, the proximal convoluted tubule, descending, ascending loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting duct. Which are the four types of RTA? The type 1 most important, we have got distal RTA or the type 1 RTA. The distal or type 1 RTA is the defect in the H plus K plus ATPS pump, which is most important step is defective. This pump is mainly present in the collecting duct. Single best answer, present in the collecting duct. Since it is affecting most important step, the distal RTA is the most severe type of RTA. Most severe and also the most common inherited type of RTA. Since the disease is not only severe, also inherited, it is going to present in children. Young boys are going to be affected by Type 1 RTA. The child is going to come with the short stature. We just discussed acidosis causes rickets. There is also risk of nephrocalcinosis. Also risk of nephrocalcinosis. But the diagnostic test is the urine pH more than 5.5 confirms the diagnosis. Since the disease is most severe, associated with worst prognosis. All these points to remember. The type 1 RTA, most severe. The type 2 RTA is also known as the proximal RTA. Type 2 is also called as proximal RTA. Defect of bicarbonate absorption defect in the PCT. Defect in bicarbonate reabsorption defect in the PCT. We are having PCT. But all the features are related to the Fanconi's triad. Fanconi's triad and D3 loss in the urine. Fanconi's triad and D3 loss in the urine. Fanconi's triad. What does it include? Glycosuria. Amino acid urea and the phosphate urea. And the phosphate urea. 
is got there. So, I know, Anna, so when students say, when students say that uh, it is very slow, I am very happy because that means you are already been taught by me. You already know the subject well, that is why you find it slow. But I always tell, there is nothing topic which is easy or difficult. It is easy topic means topic that you know. Difficult means once you do not know. So, this is a general, on a revise because these are all evergreen topics, always going to come. So, keep revising with me. So, type 3 we have got, the type 3 we have got is the marble brain or the marble bone disease. The marble brain and the marble bone disease where the patient is coming with the cerebral calcification. The patient is coming with cerebral calcification and osteopetrosis. Cerebral calcification and osteopetrosis because actually patient is having inherited defect in the CA2 gene defect. So, defect is in the carbonic anhydrase. Defect is in the carbonic anhydrase enzyme which is present in the brain also, in the bone also. That is why rather than kidney, they are coming with brain and bone problem. The type 4 RTA, compare the type 4 is also called hyperkalemic RTA. Only RTA with hyperkalemia. Compare, there is a aldosterone defect. It is due to aldosterone defect which causes defect in both H plus and K plus secretion. Defect in both H plus and K plus secretion. Since it is opposite, it is the mildest type of RTA and it is most commonly acquired cause and that is why age of presentation is more than 50 equal in both gender. But in the patient, majority presentation is asymptomatic. Majority presentation is asymptomatic and drug induced by stopping the offending drug can cure the disease. Stop offending drug, you can cure the disease. Hence associated with best prognosis. Hence associated with best prognosis. So, remember in the renal tubular acidosis, Again, I am telling, when to suspect RTA? When patient has normal anion gap in plasma, high anion gap in urine, it is RTA. RTA in children with nephrocalcinosis, pH more than 5.5, type 1. Acidosis is mild, Fanconi stride is there, type 2. Brain and bone are affected, type 3. Hyperkalemia is there type 4 RTA. That is how we choose the answer. Now, going to the fourth topic, the counterpart of RTA are the inherited channelopathy, are the inherited channelopathy. So, again, it is a group of disease having, group of disease having aldosterone excess state, group of disease having aldosterone excess state. All the diseases except for Jordan's syndrome, except for Jordan's syndrome, all the channelopathies have got aldosterone excess state, aldosterone excess state. So, what happens here? Aldosterone excess causes increased H plus and K plus secretion into the urine and this causes the patient to develop hypokalemic metabolic alkalosis which is associated with elevated urine chloride level. So, aldosterone excess is diagnosed on ABG when patient has got hypokalemic alkalosis with increased urine chloride level. So, all channelopathies are same except for Jordan syndrome. So, let us understand that topic again. So, last like we did for the renal tubular acidosis, let us make a flowchart illustration for channelopathy. 
in the channelopathy also four types we want to mark in the channelopathy also four types we want to mark but here we want to write about which chronic drug which chronic drug mimics the inherited channelopathy that also we want to keep marking so number 1 the most severe channelopathy is the red cross in the thick ascending loop of henley red cross in the thick ascending loop of henley is barter's syndrome autosomal recessive inhibitory defect of sodium potassium 2-chloride ATPS pump, sodium potassium 2-chloride ATPS pump. So, this is mimicked by chronic use of loop diuretics, chronic use of loop diuretic. But 30 percent patient have associated deafness because the same pump is also maintaining endolymph concentration in cochlea. That is why we study loop diuretic side effect is autotoxicity because same pump is also working in cochlea. There is also risk of nephrocalcinosis, also risk of nephrocalcinosis. But important feature is it is NSAID responsive, it is NSAID responsive channelopathy. NSAIDs can slow the progression of the disease. NSAIDs can slow the progression of the disease. Important question. NSAID responsive channelopathy, deafness channelopathy is barter syndrome. The next one is the Gittleman's syndrome. The Gittleman's syndrome where we get is the blue cross in distal nephron. The blue cross in distal nephron is the Gittleman syndrome, autosomal recessive inhibitory defect of sodium chloride co-transporter, autosomal recessive inhibitory defect of sodium chloride co-transporter which is mimicked by thiazides group of diuretic. Obviously, thiazides are less potent. So, Gittleman is milder than Barter. All the features of Gittleman are because of hypomagnesemia MCQ. All features are because of hypomagnesemia. But opposite fellow, in nearby you make purple plus in the distal nephron is the Jordan's syndrome, which is exception to the rule because autosomal dominant stimulatory defect, autosomal dominant stimulatory defect of sodium chloride co-transporter, autosomal dominant stimulatory defect of opposite of Gittleman. The channel which is inhibited in Gittleman is stimulated in Jordan. That is why the finding also exact opposite you get hyperkalemic acidosis which can mimic type 4 RTA like aldosterone defect but the serum aldosterone levels are normal that is why it is also called pseudo hypoaldosteronism the pseudo hypoaldosteronism and the drug of choice is the thiazides drug of choice is the thiazides. Very good. The fourth one, MCQ favorite, green press in collecting duct is the Liddell's syndrome. The Liddell's syndrome, fourth channelopathy, it is the autosomal dominant stimulatory ENAC defect, stimulatory ENAC defect, which is mimicked by the exogenous steroid exogenous steroid use can mimic Liddell's syndrome. ENAC is the receptor normally controlled by aldosterone, but aldosterone is not there. That is why it is called pseudo hyperaldosteronism. The pseudo hyperaldosteronism it is called as, but the good news drug of choice is amyloride. 
the drug of choice is amyloride which can offer potential cure hence it has got best prognosis nothing to worry so what are two questions extra question related to these two channelopathy and rta so channelopathy also four in number pay attention to keywords in both these topics pay attention to the keywords so we discussed rta one group channelopathy one group with relevant factor coming back to kidney disease itself clinical approach we want to go for so gentlemen calcium levels are not directly affected rather in gentlemen there is hypocalciuria okay hypocalciuria so there is no direct effect on that so curious doc so gentlemen has no direct association with calcium but kidney stone don't occur here kidney stone occur only in barter's syndrome remember that point so coming to nephrology renal disease again how to differentiate when patient comes with renal disorder when patient comes with renal disorder when do you say when patient is having elevated creatinine or patient has got symptom most common symptom are the uremic features whether it is acute kidney disease or whether it is chronic kidney disease the most common patient will come to us with uremic feature elevated creatinine what to do in them first step we have to take first step we have to take differentiate between acute kidney injury and chronic kidney disease very important question three times it has come last year also so most important parameter to differentiate is cortico medullary differentiation then come the remaining so in acute kidney injury what happens to cmd cmd is normal or preserved normal or preserved the size of the kidney is normal or enlarged the most common cast in acute kidney injury is the hyaline cast urine osmolarity is concentrated or dilute anemia is rare but bone disease is never present so basically when everything looks normal you will suspect acute kidney disease but none of the feature are specific for diagnosis and that is why to confirm the diagnosis we will go for kd igo criteria take it forward you will go for kd igo criteria but in ckd there are direct features also when the cmd if it is lost the cmd if it is lost if the size of the kidney are shrunken if cast in the urine is the broad waxy cast if patient is having isothin urea patient is having anemia common but not specific and metabolic bone disease if present diagnostic of ckd so any one specific feature or the patient has got duration more than 3 months diagnosis is complete so either you need duration of the disease more than 3 month or any one of their star factor star factor means specific factor is present diagnosis can be confirmed so ckd is done focus further on aki aki to confirm diagnosis we want to go for kd igo criteria tell me very important criteria what does it include number 1 number 1 kd igo criteria says if the urine output is less than 0.5 ml per kg per hour for 6 or more consecutive hours 6 or more consecutive hour so if i ask you minimum time minimum time 
for the diagnosis of AKI is 6 hour. Minimum time is 6 hour. Or there should be increase in the creatinine by more than 0.3 milligram from the baseline within 48 hours. Within 48 hours. Or there is increase in the serum creatinine by more than 1.5 times the baseline within 7 days. The diagnosis can be confirmed as acute kidney injury. Must know criteria. KD IGO criteria for confirmation of acute kidney injury. Take this forward. In a patient with acute kidney injury, what will you do further? You want to investigate whether the disease is pre-renal or renal. Which is most common? Most common is pre-renal. Contributing 85% of the cases are pre-renal. But 10 to 15% can be renal also. So, we want to differentiate between two. After confirming AKI, next step in exam, very important table, always asked, must know, pre-renal versus renal. Pre-renal AKI, you will say, when the patient urea creat ratio is more than 20 is to 1, urine osmolarity is more than 500, but urine sodium is less than 20, phena is less than 1%. And the novel markers are absent, that is pre-renal. But renal AKI, when the urea creat ratio is less than 12 is to 1, urine osmolarity is dilute, less than 350, but urine sodium is more than 40, phena is more than 2% and the novel marker, if present, is the most specific finding already written. MCQ is there. Sensitive marker is phena. Specific are novel biomarker of AKI in the spot urine. Biomarkers are secreted by kidney. So, if they are present, problem is in the kidney. The only two FD approved biomarker are TIMP2, IGF BP7. Other markers in India, NGAL, KIM1, interleukin-18. These are our biomarker for diagnosis of renal AKI. Remember, they are not sensitive, specific for diagnosis of renal AKI. But in the renal AKI, most important we want to know is glomerulonephritis. Though GN is not common, we all know only 4 to 6 percent of renal AKI are glomerulonephritis. Only 4 to 6 percent of renal AKI are GN, but still very important in MCQ. So, when patient has renal AKI, when it is glomerulonephritis, first you will use clinical classification. Look at the feature. When do you say patient is having nephritic syndrome? When glomerulonephritis patient comes with the symptom hematuria hypertension. Hematuria hypertension with the relatively, yes, PDF will be available. PDF will be available. So, I want you to listen to me. Isothinuria means urine and plasma osmolarity are the same. Urine and plasma osmolarity are the same. Relatively rapid decline in the GFR. Relatively rapid decline in the GFR. But the type of proteinuria, non-selective and less than 3 gram per day proteinuria. Non-selective and less than 3 gram per day proteinuria is nephritic syndrome. Remember, nephritic syndrome. But once you diagnose nephritic syndrome, to identify the cause, you will go for specific antibody present. 
So, if the patient of nephritic syndrome has elevated IgA level, it is IgA nephropathy, also known as Berger's disease. If the patient is DNA is positive, diagnosis is PSGN. Anti-DSDNA positive is lupus nephritis. Anca positive is vasculitis. And anti-GBM positive is good pasture syndrome, which is luckily the least common type of the cause of nephritic syndrome. Least common type of nephritic syndrome. So, take it one by one. So, in the MCQ, nephritic syndrome is given. Please look at antibody. That will tell you what is probable cause of the glomerulonephritis. But further, if the patient is nephrotic syndrome, when to call patient as nephrotic syndrome? When patient present with edema, anasarca and symptoms of hypercoagulable state. Symptoms of hypercoagulable state with a relatively preserved GFR. With a relatively preserved GFR. But what is type of proteinuria? It is selective and more than 3 gram per day proteinuria. Important word. Selective and more than 3 gram per day proteinuria is nephrotic syndrome. In this patient, you will take into consideration two things. One, age of onset. Number two, atypical feature present. When nephrotic syndrome comes in children before 10 years of age with no atypical feature, answer is minimal change disease. Answer is minimal change disease, drug of choice steroid, you know. When the nephrotic syndrome comes in 30 to 50, additional symptom hypertension, answer is FSGS. Elderly patient coming with hematuria, answer is membranous nephropathy, answer is membranous nephropathy and why does hematuria occur? Due to renal vein thrombosis, occurs due to renal vein thrombosis because membranous has got worst hypercoagulable state, it has got worst hypercoagulable state among the nephrotic syndrome. So, so many, this is rapid revision only. So, all the topics, the concept we have studied, this is the time to summarize them in a capsule. So, that when the MCQ comes, no, we have to learn to apply them. 1, 2, 3, diagnosis done. Next question. Next question. So, acute is done. Beyond the acute, we go on to the next one that is management of CKD. In AKI, focus was on cause, but in the CKD, the management mainly depends on the stage of CKD. Depend on the stages of CKD. That's what we want to know. On the stages of CKD, we want to know. So, stages of CKD are how? We will write down here, make a quick chart. What are the stages? Totally 5 stages of CKD are present. There are 5 stages of CKD based on albumin urea and based on the EGFR, estimated glomerular filtration rate. And we want to write down what are the treatment recommendations in this patient. So, what are the stages? How to remember? I have taught you 1 and 2 together, 2 lines each, 3 and 4 together, 3 lines each and stage 5 separate, 2 lines each for the CKD. So, there are 2 parameters, albuminuria, EGFR followed by treatment protocol. In stage 1 and stage 2, what you will get? Microalbumin urea. 
which indicates it is a reversible stage of the disease indicates it is a reversible stage of the disease but in 3 4 5 you have got gross albumin urea indicating they are irreversible stages of the disease indicating they are irreversible stages of the disease we can only classify them into two further classification is based on the egfr based on the egfr we have got so how to remember stage 1 gfr is normal 90 to 120 ml per minute in stage 2 60 to 89 ml per minute when does the patient develop a symptom symptom come only when it is less than 40 ml per minute which occurs in stage 3 30 to 59 ml per minute or it is 15 to 29 ml per minute or in stage 5 less than 15 ml per minute which corresponds to more than 90 percent nephron loss is present in this patient so what you will do now in the first two, listen carefully. The patient is asymptomatic and reversible disease. In this patient, I want to control all the risk factor, namely diabetes, hypertension. I want to ensure hydration in this patient. I want to avoid nephrotoxic drug. Want to avoid nephrotoxic drug and I want to start drug of choice for albumin urea that is ACE inhibitor more than ARB I want to start but once the patient develops a symptom once the patient develops symptom along with above management I am going to start erythropoietin supplementation and correct the mineral homeostasis that's why we started with that no bone disease erythropoietin and correct the mineral homeostasis you will do and you will also prepare the patient for renal replacement therapy prepare the patient for renal replacement therapy so you want to screen the donors you want to screen the donors or you want to do AV fistula. You want to give hepatitis B vaccination. These are preparation. Why preparation is important? Because in stage 5, there is no choice. Renal replacement therapy is mandatory for survival. Renal replacement therapy is mandatory for survival and that is why it is called end stage kidney disease that is why it is called end stage kidney disease so now you know end stage kidney disease is nothing but stage 5 CKD where damage is irreversible GFR is less than 15 90 percent gone and patient cannot live without renal replacement therapy bringing us to last point in nephrology about renal replacement therapy the renal replacement therapy the best form of renal replacement therapy remains the best form of renal replacement therapy remains renal transplant because transplant what it will do the transplant can replace all the functions the transplant can replace all the functions of the native kidney all the functions of the native kidneys and that is why it offers potential cure and longer survival potential cure and longer survival that is why if i want to do rrt first i will try for the transplant but unfortunately, so far, what is the big challenge we have got is the limited donor availability. 
is because kidney donor not yet available on Amazon Prime. You cannot order, no? That is why the problem is there. And that is why we end up having to choose dialysis. So, dialysis we have got two options now. First, we will try for our renal transplant. That is not possible. You go for dialysis. Two forms are available. Hemodialysis versus peritoneal dialysis. Which one to choose? Hemo versus peritoneal dialysis. Which one to choose? Answer is simple here. In the hemodialysis, when you want to do access, you need a vascular access, either a AV fistula or cannula. But access is associated with increased risk of sepsis and bleeding. It is associated with risk of sepsis and bleeding. Because hemodialysis requires a special machine, it has got limited availability. Patient has to come, purchase the filter, so the cost is higher. The risk of transmission is also high because the same machine is used for all patients. Hemodynamic shift is also huge in this patient and that is why most common acute complication in the dialysis department is hypotension. But it is contraindicated in the cardiomyopathy because it can cause sudden cardiac death risk. Contraindication is cardiomyopathy because associated with risk of sudden cardiac death. So, after renal transplant, survival is almost 14 to 17 years. After dialysis is only 7 to 9 years. So, transplant survival is double of dialysis. But hemodialysis, you can see multiple problems are there. In cardiomyopathy, you cannot do also. During the hemodialysis, along with BP, there is risk of hypoglycemia also. So, remember, in hemodialysis, both BP sugar go down. But peritoneal dialysis, when you put catheter, the risk of peritonitis is low. Less than 1% risk of peritonitis is present. Availability, it can be home based also, no problem. So, cost is also lower. There is none, no risk of infection transmission and there is low shift. Hence, it is safe in cardiomyopathy also. Safe in cardiomyopathy also. But yes, small complication, risk of hyperglycemia with weight gain can occur during peritoneal dialysis. But still when you compare, it seems peritoneal is less red, this is all red. But which one to choose? Which one to choose? Remains hemodialysis only. Remains hemodialysis only. Why? Because it offers excellent filtration rate. Excellent filtration rate of 800 to 1200 ml per minute. While the peritoneal dialysis, in spite of offering better advantages, offers poor filtration rate of 15 to 25 ml per minute only. And that is why first choice is hemodialysis. Peritoneal is done only if the hemodialysis is contraindicated or unavailable. Then only you will go for peritoneal dialysis. So, remember, so in exact one hour, we have gone through the top 10 topics of nephrology. Must know topics of nephrology. So, anemia question, bone disease question, RTA channelopathy, they, we did diagnosis of AKI, KDIGO criteria, specific feature of CKD, we did management of AKI, we did classification of GN, studied the stages management of CKD, 
एंड ओवरव्यू ऑफ द रीनल रिप्लेसमेंट थेरेपी इन नेफ्रोलॉजी राइट सो टाइम टू मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट सेट ऑफ क्वेश्चन रूमेटोलॉजी सो विच आर द टॉप टेन टॉपिक्स इन रूमेटोलॉजी लेट अस सी सो टॉप टेन टॉपिक्स इन रूमेटोलॉजी जस्ट अगेन सीरीज सी आई एम टेलिंग यू अगेन एंड अगेन वेन वी रीड इन द सेम पैटर्न वेन यू रिवाइज नो it is not only that you are revising only what i am teaching you in your mind you are going through every single page in between we have written down topics when you have done in live class but even when we are doing jumping the topics your mind is subconsciously going through entire thing that's all we want so that when it is accessible to you on day of exam same way let us do with rheumatology now top 10 topics of rheumatology we want to start here na no, na no, urine osmolarity low in a renal aki because renal aki has got loss of concentrating ability mia loss of concentrating ability in renal aki okay coming to rheumatology start with auto inflammatory disease look at immunofluorescence pattern rheumatology more image based question image based question we will spend some time there that is what we want to recall in our exam let's go through that first question what are these auto inflammatory disorders auto inflammatory disease so auto inflammatory disorders the auto inflammatory disorders are basically innate immunity excess disorder they are the innate immunity excess disorder what are the common points in them auto inflammatory are the innate excess disorder what is common in them all of them are familial and that is why they present in they are familial they present in young boys they are familial and the most common clinical feature is the recurrent fever is the recurrent fever is the most common feature in all these patient and that is why the disease group is also known as the familial periodic fever syndromes they are also known as the familial periodic fever syndromes they are known as among the familial periodic fever syndrome most common is the fmf the most common most famous is the topic of familial mediterranean fever but the differential diagnosis is the familial hibernian fever let us go through familial mediterranean fever familial hibernian fever hibernian fever that is in the ireland hibernian fever these are the two differentials that we want to study so tell me about fmf young boy repeated fever where is the defect the defect is in the inflammasome protein there is over expression of the prr that is pattern recognizing receptor very good Medi media stinum ana nalla peru da ha is good name acha naam rakha hai media stinum kya naam hai over expression of pattern recognizing receptor the fibril episode is lasting for only 3 to 5 days only lasting for 3 to 5 days only the specific organ involved is the serous cavity serous cavity and the drug of choice is colchicin drug of choice is colchicin that's why the new name is the recurrent serositis it is the recurrent polycerositis syndrome the recurrent polycerositis syndrome is the new name for the familial mediterranean fever but similar looking mcq is there but the defect is now different the defect is tnf alpha receptor defect 
the TNF alpha receptor defect where the duration of fever is more than one week that is 7 to 10 days 7 to 10 days and ocular involvement eye swelling is important eye swelling is important the drug of choice response is better to steroids and they are now called as traps so traps tnf alpha receptor associated periodic syndrome tnf alpha receptor associated periodic syndrome is the new name we want to give the patient with FHF. So, we have the two important topics here auto inflammatory disease very important FMF is common FHF is the close differential. Why is it important to treat because of the common dreaded complication uncontrolled inflammation causes increased levels of acute phase reactant. These acute phase reactants are amyloid that is why they cause this AA type of secondary amyloidosis. AA type of secondary amyloidosis which causes renal failure, which causes renal failure which is the most common cause of death before 40 years of age. Death before 40 years of age and that is why it is important to know about the disease. Even though rare in practice, common in MCQ and we should not miss in practice because if you miss, the patient will die before 40 due to kidney failure. So, important group auto inflammatory disorder coming back to autoimmune autoimmune diseases are adaptive excess state come to the next group what is the next group autoimmune disorders the autoimmune disorders are the adaptive excess group autoimmune disorders are the adaptive excess group states are the autoimmune disease among the various autoimmune diseases that we have in practice autoimmune diseases are more common in young age female they are more common they are common in young age female they are more common and the most sensitive antibody screening antibody is the ANA anti nuclear antibody because it has 98 percent sensitivity. So, ANA testing is the screening antibody, but ANA can be positive in multiple rheumatology disease. So, what we want to do? Look at the immunofluorescence pattern of ANA immunofluorescence pattern tells you corresponding antibody probable diagnosis so look clearly with me each image i want you to look here so homogeneous uniformly stained nucleus it is seen with anti dsdna or anti histone idiopathic or drug induced sle means likely answer is sle only homogeneous pattern is SLE only but if you get centromere pattern I have put the label here centromere means spindle shape like spindle like appearance is there centromere pattern seen with centromere antibody which is specific for crest syndrome limited systemic sclerosis is present nucleolar look again like a bifid nucleus you find Nucleolar means anti SCL70, topo isomerase 1, diagnosis is diffuse systemic sclerosis. Diagnosis is diffuse systemic sclerosis. And the speckled pattern, speckled pattern can be associated with multiple antibody. Sikka syndrome also, overlap also, myositis also, it can be present. So, remember. ANA is common, not specific. 
the immunofluorescence pattern can guide you towards the diagnosis. Needless to say, the most common group of rheumatology disease in practice are the lupus disorder. Most common group of the rheumatology disease are lupus disorder. So, tell me epidemiology, common feature, specific feature, specific antibody. Come on, 1, 2, 3, 1 by 1 we want to do. So, in SLE, start with SLE, make it colorful, start with SLE. In SLE, epidemiology, classical, 20 to 30 years, female dominant disease. What is most common feature in SLE? Most common feature is synovitis, but it is always non-erosive. That is why it is called as Jacquard's arthropathy. Most common is Jacquard's arthropathy, but characteristic feature are the malar or the discoid rash. That is the cutaneous manifestation are characteristic, do not make mistake. The specific antibody, most specific antibody is anti-Smith more than anti-DSDNA. Anti-Smith more than DSDNA, we have got here, very good. Come to next one, limited form of systemic sclerosis also known as crest syndrome, also known as crest syndrome. So, the limited as well as the diffuse form, both of them, rather all the remaining ones are 30 to 50 years, middle aged females are affected in all the other three. So, SL is the only one of young female, otherwise differential we think of. The systemic sclerosis, most common feature are Reynolds phenomena, is most common, also earliest feature, but it is non-specific for the diagnosis. But it is non-specific for the diagnosis. Characteristic features are related to the crest syndrome, cutaneous feature. So, calcinosis, Reynolds phenomena, esophageal dysmotility, sclerodactyly, telangiectasia. But increased risk of organ involvement, increased risk of organ involvement in the diffuse form. But diagnostic antibody, crest syndrome, we just saw in the immunofluorescence pattern, anticentromere. And anti-SCL70 is diagnostic of diffuse systemic sclerosis. Sikka syndrome, what are the points here? Sikka syndrome, most common feature is Sikka symptom. Dryness, Sikka symptom. Dryness of eyes, dryness of mouth. Dryness of eyes, dryness of mouth. And the specific feature also, same. So, both the common and specific are Sikka symptom because most common organ affected is exocrine gland. Specific antibody is antero antila which is also known as SSA and SSB. SSA and SSB, that is what we want to remember, right? So, for most common rheumatology group is lupus group of disease, important to know antibodies, the characteristic feature which you can pick it up in the exam, MCQ. But the next disease which is positive for ANA are the myositis syndrome. Myositis syndrome, most common myositis syndrome is polymyositis. Least common is the inclusion body myositis, inclusion body myositis. So, look at the point here. In myositis, common symptom is painful muscle weakness, but when to call it as polymyositis? When the age is 20 to 30 female dominant disease, when along with 
painful proximal muscle weakness. Painful proximal muscle weakness is present with sparing of extraocular muscles are spared. Very important. Always it will be written in MCQ with no ocular symptom. With no ocular symptom is present. The serum CPK level is grossly elevated more than 1000. Diagnostic test in all of them is the muscle biopsy. The diagnostic test in all of them to confirm the myositis is muscle biopsy. But additional test you want to look for the anti jo antibody which is also known as anti synthetase antibody if it is present then these two are that is why called as anti synthetase syndrome can be present in both but without no skin involvement no skin involvement then you mark it as polymyositis response to steroid is excellent Prognosis is the best. Prognosis is the best. Dermatomyositis on other hand affects middle-aged female. Middle-aged female. Along with weakness, patient comes with Gottron's rash which is most specific. They can also present with the V sign or the shawl sign. They can also present with V sign or the shawl sign, skin involvement. The CPKMB is sky high, but additional test you want to do pan endoscopy and bone marrow study. Bone marrow study to exclude malignancy, MCQ, the only myositis syndrome associated with risk of malignancy is dermatomyositis. Bone marrow study, endoscopy, GI and hematological malignancy. Response is favorable. So, prognosis also intermediate. After you exclude malignancy, all is well, nothing to worry. When inclusion body, odd man out, only myositis affecting male dominant. It is a focal myositis. It is a focal myositis. And the hallmark is distal more than proximal weakness. The distal more than proximal weakness. CPK level may be normal or even low because only focal muscle is affected. Not very high inflammation. No additional test, but response to steroid is poor. Prognosis is worst among the myositis syndrome. Prognosis is worst among the myositis syndrome. Simple table. So, lupus disease is common, but when ANA positive comes with muscle involvement, you think of myositis syndrome. Myositis syndrome, young female, antigo positive, no skin involvement, responding to steroid, answer is poly. Middle aged female, muscle weakness, plus skin involvement, having risk of malignancy, dermatomyositis. Inclusion is odd man out, man out. This is the only one with male gender, focal myositis, distal more than proximal, Normal CPK, worst prognosis. Key words we want to remember. Take that forward. So, every year approximately rheumatology and nephrology will give you 4 to 6 questions. Nephrology, rheumatology will give you 4 to 6 questions. But if you count the questions from pharmacology also, rheumat can add 2 more questions. Because many new drugs, biological, immunological, pharmac based question. If you add biopsy and radiology also, rheumatology will give you two more questions. Nephrology will give you two more questions for pathology. So, when you combine these systems together, no, 
10 to 12 questions you will easily answer that is why I always say in medicine cardiology neurology white elephant you study a lot 4 question 6 question and that also 4 you may everybody will know but nephro rheumatana everybody does not know either you know or you do not know so you want to be the one who knows that answer because if you combine physio patho pharmac and medicine easily 10 to 12 questions you are going to conquer just by knowing these two small topics of medicine take it forward so next one we have got is the inflammatory polyarthritis inflammatory polyarthritis is there inflammatory poly poly means what minimum more than equal to phi joint involvement more than equal to phi joint involvement is the polyarthritis the most common cause of inflammatory polyarthritis is rheumatoid arthritis but the differential diagnosis is the spondyloarthropathy is the spa the spondyloarthropathies that is the group spondyloarthropathies that is the group of the arthritis syndrome in the patient with rheumatoid arthritis patient is ra factor positive family history is negative in majority genetic predisposition hla dr4 hla drb1 actual involvement is rare and late in the disease primary site of joint involvement is synovitis and the predominant feature is articular first line treatment is demod the most potent demod is methotrexate most potent demod is methotrexate so look at the point here so inflammatory polyarthritis young female who is RA factor positive without family history, without spine involvement, having synovitis, predominant joint symptom, think of RA and start on DMAT, best is methotrexate. But spondyloarthropathy, when to consider spondyloarthropathies, when the RA factor is negative, that is why they are called zero negative arthropathy. Family history, however, is positive because genetic disposition is HLA B27. Actual involvement is relatively common. Primary site of involvement is enthesitis, enthesis, and the predominant feature is extra articular predominant feature is extra articular with excellent response to NSAID extra articular with excellent response to NSAID so rheumatoid arthritis questions related to pharmacology methotrexate DMAD biological immunological but in spondyloarthropathy the related questions are always extra articular or radiology related question skin also comes into picture no so tell me what is this showing okay come on identify image diagnosis and move on come on diagnosis young patient if i say patient is a 20 year old male who has presented with chronic low back pain patient has come with chronic low back pain ana mere ko malum hai re tum log sab fake ga aisa ana bamboo stick appearance dikh raha hai kya bamboo idhar ana still ana to just angspond is there but i want finding here ana finding kya hai bamboo spine nahi hai re yahan par kya dekh rahe bilateral sacroiliitis so patient comes with bilateral sac Sacroiliitis. Sacroiliitis is present leading to the back pain. 
प्लीज रिमेम्बर यूनिलैट्रल सैक्रोआईलाइटिस इन अवर कंट्री यूनिलैट्रल सैक्रोआईलाइटिस इज नॉट एंगस्पॉन्ड इट इज ट्यूबरकुलसिस बाइलैट्रल सैक्रोआईलाइटिस इज एंगस्पॉन्ड बाइलैट्रल इज द एंकाइलोजिंग स्पॉन्डिलाइटिस यूनिलैट्रल इज ट्यूबरकुलसिस यूनिलैट्रल इज ट्यूबरकुलसिस इज देयर ओके what is the extra articular manifestation 70% cases are preceded by the uveitis preceded by uveitis and it has got strongest association relation with hla b27 strongest association with hla b27 the problem it is the disease which can cause restriction of the respiratory movements can cause restriction of respiratory movements causing hypoventilation disorder leading to heart failure which is the dreaded manifestation of the disease dreaded manifestation of the disease that is why one of the spa axial dominant spa this is our axial dominant spa is the ankylosing spondylitis axial dominant spa is the ankylosing spondylitis cause of death is heart failure cause of death is heart failure remember this mcq cause of death is heart failure in this patient take it forward to the next one name the disease which mimics ra name the disease which mimics ra which disease mimics ra is the psoriatic arthropathy mimics ra is the psoriatic arthropathy mimics ra psoriatic arthropathy mimics ra how is it similar because they share the most common pattern is the same the most common pattern is symmetrical symmetrical polyarthritis affecting the small joints of hand symmetrical polyarthritis affecting the small joints of the hand and that is why it looks like ra but what is unique in that the dip joint involvement is early and common dip involvement is early and common in that is diagnosis but more than 85% will already have the skin and the nail changes of psoriasis the skin and nail changes of psoriasis but the most common nail changes oncolysis that is nail peeling oncolysis which is nail peeling is most common type remember the arthritis which mimics ra psoriatic what are points to remember common pattern looks like ra but what is different dip more important skin and nail change are also present in this patient if you get anterior uveitis okay recurrent unilateral anterior uveitis unilateral anterior uveitis you get in angspon okay take this forward so what is this now when patient has got a asymmetrical when patient has got a asymmetrical polyarthritis which is predominantly large joint involvement predominantly large joint involvement what will you look for you will see what is the joint involved if the patient is having upper limb involvement patient is having upper limb joint involvement or the patient is having lower limb joint involvement you will see 
patient if it is most commonly preceded by diarrhea most commonly preceded by diarrhea or most commonly preceded by chlamydia associated uti chlamydia associated uti you will make the diagnosis here you will think of ibd associated arthritis ibd associated arthritis you will see ibd associated arthritis is often which is the specific feature the rare but specific skin manifestation the rare but specific skin manifestation is the pyoderma gangrenosum is the pyoderma gangrenosum is the rare but specific feature of the ibd associated arthritis but if lower limb joint are affected history of uti is present and patient is having painless keratotic lesions painless keratotic lesions over the palms and the soles over the palms and the soles what will you think of painless keratotic lesion over palms and the sole what do you call this as keratoderma blenorrhagicum this is keratoderma blenorrhagicum you are going to call this and this is diagnostic of reactive arthritis diagnostic of the reactive arthritis we can say reactive arthritis we can say so totally there are four types of spa spondyloarthropathy if it is axial dominant male gender angspon if it is like ra it is psoriatic asymmetrical large is either ibd or reactive arthritis so there are total four types of spondyloarthropathy common point already we wrote and important is what first line treatment is nsaid alone first line treatment is nsaid alone so what is the favorite question favorite question what is the indication for demard use what is the indication for demard use in patient with spondyloarthropathy answer indication for demard use when patient has got radiological changes present mcq when patient has got radiological changes present either the patient has bone erosions or the patient has got marrow edema then you start the patient on demard therapy start the patient on demard therapy you want to do that so we completed lupus myositis arthritis remaining fellow is vasculitis come to the vasculitis part vasculitis we are going to deal in images large vessel vasculitis identify for me the large vessel vasculitis okay what are the key words let me tell you when the patient is having large vessel vasculitis what are the key words when the patient is post menopausal female patient is post menopausal female presenting with throbbing headache presenting with throbbing headache which is worse in the supine position worse in the supine position with having polymyalgia rheumatica having polymyalgia rheumatica then what do you think of three points i have given you patient is having female gender throbbing headache polymyalgia rheumatica answer is giant cell arteritis the answer is giant cell arteritis you want to think of 
the gold standard of diagnosis is the temporal artery biopsy gold standard of diagnosis is temporal artery biopsy but if patient refuses biopsy what is the alternative color doppler of the temporal artery what is it showing color doppler study of temporal artery what is it showing halo sign halo sign is the alternative to the biopsy if patient refuses biopsy what you can do color doppler study can confirm diagnosis for you the drug of choice is steroids the drug of choice is steroids to prevent to which complication to prevent the two complications we want to prevent one is blindness and other is the aorto arteritis prevent the blindness and the other one is the aorto arteritis needs to be prevented that is our very important one that is giant cell vasculitis giant cell arteritis is there take it forward to the second fellow large vessel again but what is this patient now patient is having large vessel vasculitis again but this large vessel vasculitis now the patient age is gone different young female is the patient what is the patient having patient is having upper limb claudication patient is having absent upper limb pulsation patient is having young case of myocardial infarction hypertension mi or stroke you will think of takayasu's arteritis but takayasu's arteritis can affect all the direct branches of aorta it can affect all the direct branches of aorta that is why it is now called as aortic arch syndrome it is now called as aortic arch syndrome we are going to call it so what is gold standard of diagnosis mr aortography look in the image mr aortography shows multi vessel involvement mr aortography has multi vessel involvement on the mr aortography you can see multiple ones are affected ana subclavian carotid vertebral multiple vessels so stenosis the diagnosis is takayasu's disease multi vessel involvement most common artery affected is subclavian that is why upper limb claudication but that is non specific but carotid coronary can be affected which can be potentially fatal that is our important picture mr aortography take it forward what is this diagnosis come on help me with this diagnosis if patient comes if a middle aged male presents with the levido changes patient has come with hematuria but what is always written hematuria is present but there is no dysmorphic rbc or cast in the urine but the patient is having mononeuritis multiplex mononeuritis multiplex can occur but patient can have gonadal artery involvement leading to abdominal pain can occur but the most specific feature the most specific feature is the levido changes the most specific feature are the levido changes are present then you know that you are dealing with diagnosis of pan polyarteritis nodosa what does it cause fibrinoid necrosis where 
fibrinoid necrosis right at the bifurcation another name is node of the medium sized arteries of the medium sized arteries most common is renal artery that is why renal angiography if it shows micro aneurysm at the nodes that is why we call it as polyarteritis nodosa bifurcation junction metro line comes no that is called nodes you can see from picture where is the problem right where it bifurcate there is going to be aneurysm formation micro aneurysm at the bifurcation is going to be there is the bifurcation is specific of polyarteritis nodosa micro aneurysm at the nodes medium vessel vasculitis is present so to complete one small vessel vasculitis tell me the diagnosis one small vessel vasculitis when patient is male gender typically presenting most commonly with chronic sinusitis most commonly with chronic sinusitis but along with that patient has got nasal bridge deformity x ray shows multiple cavity and abscess what are we looking at vaginers granulomatosis but what is new name for vaginer gpa granulomatous polyangitis granulomatous polyangitis is the new name gpa is the new name for vaginer so common is upper respiratory tract lung can be affected but the pathognomic feature is the ocular involvement is pathognomic of vaginers ocular involvement is pathognomic of the vaginer because no other pulmonary renal syndrome has got ocular involvement no other pulmonary renal syndrome has got ocular involvement so that is why no other pulmonary renal syndrome has got ocular involvement has ocular involvement that is why it is specific for diagnosis of vaginer right so that is the key points we wanted to revise today right so hope you have gone through the entire thing so we saw right from auto inflammatory to autoimmune to lupus arthritis myositis and finish with vasculitis right so all the very best to you and as i told you again don't miss these two topics nephrology rheumatology chota hai but bahut pyara hai ha na so don't miss these topic they are will always be rewarding chota time mein jaldi bhi khatam hoga and good reward milega theek hai all the very best to you see you soon after the exam prize distribution hoga ha na more important seed distribution hoga re so that is important work hard don't lose focus last stretch is there give it your best shot make it count all the best